Hey everybody and happy Monday. In this week's video, I'm gonna be talking exactly about how I upload my images to both Facebook and Instagram. It's no secret that we all want our images to look great when we upload them online, but a lot of times uh, maybe we might fall short on that or you might just think that you can do a little bit better. So um, no matter what reason you are here for, I'm gonna show you exactly how I upload my images to Instagram and Facebook. So just a small disclaimer here, um, I want to let you know that there is a thousand different ways to do this, um, and maybe you have a way that you think is better, but I'm just gonna show you the way that I do it. I think it looks great, uh, it's very easy to do, and we actually have a preset that's gonna do it for us. Uh, and I am gonna show you in Lightroom. There's many different ways to do it in Photoshop that other photographers are using. They've got panels and things like that that are gonna size things down and sharpen it for you. But I'm gonna show you how to do it manually in Lightroom, um, as well as give you a little preset on top of that that you can use to resize that image so that you're doing the resizing and not letting Instagram or Facebook do it for you. So enough of all of this talk, I'm gonna go in and show you exactly how I export my images for Instagram and Facebook. So I have my finished image uh, opened in Lightroom here, um, and I'm in the develop module right here, you can see. So make sure you're in develop and not library. Um, and yeah, this is this is my finished image. So I've already edited it. I edited it, edited it in Photoshop. Um, it's a hard word to say. Um, so I edited this in Photoshop, uh, not Lightroom. So you can see that none of these sliders are adjusted here. Now, the only thing that I want to adjust when I'm going to be uploading this for Instagram or Facebook is generally going to be um, the sharpening down here. Now, for some images, if they're really dark or really light, you can go through and slightly tweak uh, some of these settings here if you wanted, but for this image, um, I think it's going to look just fine. Now, on Facebook, I'm fine with this being a horizontal image. Horizontal images perform just fine on Facebook. So all that I want to do is adjust the sharpening. Now, a lot of people zoom in when they sharpen, uh, which is good if you are sharpening your image, um, maybe before you're done editing it or whatnot. But for output sharpening, um, I usually like to zoom out. Uh, if I was doing a print, I would probably zoom in, but for social media, for Facebook and for Instagram, I'm gonna zoom out here. Reason being because this image is not gonna be displayed at this size uh, on Facebook. It's gonna be displayed at a much smaller size. So I want to sharpen uh, basically what the image is going to look like for people who see it. Now, the one thing to be aware of on Facebook is that people can click on the image to enlarge it. So perhaps the image is going to be maybe this size on their screen at best. Um, and now I'm going to zoom out using Command minus on a Mac or Control minus on a PC. And I would say most of the time on Facebook, the image is probably going to be between one of these two. So I'm just going to sharpen it when it's about this size. And what I like to do here is first slide the masking. Um, and you have to increase the sharpening to unlock the three sliders below. Um, but I always do detail to 100, radius to uh, 0 0.5, and then I adjust the masking and I adjust the amount last. So what the masking does uh, when I hold Alt Option is it shows me a mask of what's being sharpened. White is being sharpened, black is not so. We want to give that a pretty good selection of our edges because we only want to sharpen the edges of our image, otherwise we're going to add noise. That's looking pretty good right there. So I'm going to release, and now I can just increase the sharpening slider. So you can see that um, it's doing a little bit in here, um, and hopefully you can see that. It is pretty small, uh, which is good. It, it shouldn't be a huge change. Um, but depending on the resolution you're watching this video in, you may or may not be able to tell a big difference. I'm just sliding it back and forth here. So basically, I just want to make sure that it looks good at the size that it's most going to be viewed at, which is about this size. And I'm feeling like somewhere about in there is good. I'm just going to toggle this to show the sharpen before and after. That looks good at this size. And I'm going to click Command Plus to zoom back in. And let's say that I think that this is probably the biggest size someone would view it at on Facebook. And I'll toggle that again. And I th still think that's looking pretty good. So that's looking good. Now I want to go ahead and export this uh, with settings to put this on Facebook. I'm going to go up to File. I'm going to go down to Export. And now I actually have presets for Facebook and Instagram. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how to make those presets uh, so you can actually do this as well. So. I'm going to go down um, through everything that's important here and the settings that you want. Uh, the first thing that I like to do is to export this to the desktop 
Um, I just go and select desktop and then I have it put in a subfolder called Facebook. So that way when I export this, it will go in my desktop into a folder called Facebook. So this is nice because if I export three or four photos at once, they'll all go into the same Facebook folder. Um, and then I go down to file naming. I rename it uh, to include the title. This image is titled Composure. Uh, you can do whatever you want here. Uh, a lot of people just leave this as whatever the settings are when you first load it in, which is totally fine. This isn't going to affect any any way that your image looks. It just affects the name, which on Facebook and Instagram, the name of the image doesn't matter because they strip that information out anyways. Um, obviously, we don't need to do anything in video. Um, then we go down to file settings. Now, for file settings for both Facebook and Instagram, we're going to go and use JPEG um, at quality 100 in color space srgb these are all very important now there's rumors out there that if you reduce the quality on your image uh, instagram will not instagram or facebook for that matter will not downsize your image this is not true always export at 100 on the quality trust me on this this is what i always do uh, 100 quality jpeg and srgb i don't limit the file size so next, I have it to resize to fit the long edge at 2048 pixels. Um, this is the long edge size on Facebook um, that your image will display at, that it allows you to upload this at. Now, this is very big for a Facebook feed, but the reason is because on Facebook, if someone clicks on your image, it will pop up large. So they want to make sure to have that 2048 pixel size image embedded so that once someone clicks um, and it pops up, that 2048 pixel image will load up nice and big. The resolution does not matter. Uh, it could be at zero, it could be at 300. Doesn't matter what you do here. So just leave it at the default, uh, which is 72 for me. Um, now I go through, I don't do any output sharpening. For metadata, if you want to include the metadata, you can. I just have it set to copyright only. If you include the metadata, um, Instagram and Facebook are just going to strip it out. So it's not necessary for you to have. Now, if you want to do a watermark, you can definitely feel free to do that. You would check this box and then you can choose um, one of your watermarks here or you can create one or whatever you want to do. I don't personally recommend watermarking your photos. I don't watermark mine. Um, generally speaking, watermarks are very easy to remove. If someone really wants to steal your photo, there's really nothing you can do to prevent it. So that is my two cents on watermarking. And then post-processing, uh, do nothing. So um, that is all of the settings that I use for Facebook. Now, now that you've clicked through all of these settings, what you wanna do is click add, because this is gonna add this as a preset on the side. So you don't have to watch my video every single time you wanna export to Facebook. Uh, you can simply just click on your preset, which will have the correct settings already. So I'm just gonna title this Facebook and put it in the folder uh, user presets and then you can click create. Um, I get an error message because I already have one called Facebook but you will not and then you'll have a preset called Facebook. And then you can simply go ahead and click export to export out your image and Lightroom will do its thing. You can see in the top left, it's already done on my computer because my computer seems to be working fast today but, um, but there would be a bar on the top left while it's exporting. So now that we see how to export for Facebook, I want to show you how I would do for um, Light or <coughs> So now that you see how to export for Facebook, I'm going to show you exactly how I export for Instagram. Now what I want to do here is click Command Shift and R or Control Shift and R on a PC. That's just going to reset all of the sharpening settings because I want to do this a little bit differently than I would for Facebook. Now the first thing on this image is that I personally don't have a problem posting these horizontal images. They do perform quite a bit less. There's tons of studies on it. Um, and the reason is that it's much easier to scroll past a horizontal image on Instagram um, rather than a vertical image because the horizontal image takes up so much less space. Um, and so for that reason, uh, most people would say that the best size for Instagram is four to five or one to one. On an, a uh, landscape-oriented image like this one, it's not going to look very good if I change it to 4 to 5 ratio. Um, so I'm just going to change it to a 1 to 1 square, and I'll show you how I do that. So I go ahead and click up here on the Crop tool, and you can go up to Aspect, and you can go here and click on whichever aspect you want. Like I said, 4 to 5 is the recommended, but in you can see that it's vertical orientation. 
I would need to flip it if I was going to do that. Uh, but I'm actually, like I said, just going to do one to one. And the nice thing about doing this is that you can kind of decide where you want your image cropped. Uh, um, most of the time I'm just cropping it right in the center, but sometimes maybe I have something that's slightly off center. So I'll crop it to the side um, or wherever you want it really. But uh, it's nice to kind of play around with it, figure out exactly what you like. Uh, I might play around with that. Not really my favorite. So I'll just go ahead and go back to the center and just like that. And I'm always looking um, for things on the edges that don't look very nice. For example, I don't really like this pink over here, touching the edge. There's really not much I can do other than to crop it like right here. So it's really up to you to crop this how you like. I might actually do this one on the side like this. Okay, and now we're gonna do the same thing as before with the sharpening, but keep in mind that on Instagram, the image is gonna be much, much smaller than on Facebook because probably 95% of people are looking at Instagram from their phones, which is a lot smaller than the computer screen. So I'm gonna zoom out quite a bit. And what I like to do here is get, get close to my screen because um, right now on my computer, I'm probably about two feet away from my computer screen. But uh, when I look at my phone on Instagram, I'm looking at it probably a foot or less away from my face. So I want to replicate that by looking at my image a foot or less away from my face. So I'm moving closer to the computer screen now and I'm gonna do the same thing as before with sharpening. Um, we're just going to do the masking again, and then we'll increase the sharpening. So you can see that this is really popping some of this stuff down here, um, as well as popping the edge on the mountain. I'm really liking this one pretty high. Uh, I can toggle this, and you can see that's making quite a big change. So that's going to help my image look really sharp uh, when I export it. So I think that's looking good. Uh, we'll go ahead and go up to File and down to Export. This time I'm going to use my Instagram preset, which I've already made. I'll walk you through it so that you can make your own. Um, again, just like Facebook, I have it set to go to the desktop in an Instagram folder. Um, I have the rename settings to go to the name of the image underscore IG. Um, and again, you can do that in custom settings if you want, or don't worry about it. You don't need to rename it. Um, by default, it will just come out as the file name .jpg. Uh, again, nothing in video. In file settings, we're going to go to JPEG, 100 on the quality, sRGB on the color space, do not limit the file size. Um, and then we're going to go down to resize to fit. And I, I want to resize to fit the short edge for Instagram on 1080 pixels. Um, so Instagram has uh, the short edge as 1080 is the largest size you can upload on Instagram. It's half the size of Facebook. The reason why I'm doing short edge instead of long is because uh, my long edge is going to change, whereas my short edge isn't. My short edge is always going to be 1080 on Instagram, but depending on the orientation of my image, my image may be um, taller. So 1080 on the short edge is what I'm going with for both a square or a four to five crop. Um, again, no output sharpening, metadata, uh, copyright only. Instagram's gonna strip all that info anyways. You can add a watermark if you like um, and no changes in post-processing other than I have this one set so that it shows in Finder after I export it. So if I go ahead and click export, it's gonna export and it's gonna pop up here in Finder. So now for Instagram, if you were going to post it on your phone, you would just need to find a way to send this out to your phone. Uh, I personally use AirDrop, but text message, email, lots of things like that work. But that pretty much wraps up exactly how I would go about posting images on social media. Um, and so, yeah, uh, so that pretty much wraps up how I go about posting on Facebook and Instagram. Again, there is a thousand different ways to do this that all are going to look great. Um, I know there may be a, a better way that is a little bit more difficult, but I really like doing it this way because it's short, simple, easy to remember, and I can have a preset um, to do it all pretty much for me so I don't have to remember a bunch of different things. All right, everybody. Well, that wraps up this week's tutorial video. Like I said, I highly recommend making sure that these two presets are in your Lightroom 
uh, presets. So that way, when you go to post on your Facebook page or you go to post on your Instagram, you simply just have to sharpen your photo and click on the preset and you are done with it. It's super, super important that your images look great when you post them online, especially if you want to impress people, uh, grow a following or even earn money from your photography. So keep these presets, use them every time that you go to post on social media. Um, and you, I don't think you'll be disappointed with the results. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a good one.